what if I buy something and no one wants and no one wants to buy it from me? Um, and what you're going to start to learn is if you're moving into numismatics or different collectibles, uh, that's just not reality. Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, in this video, uh, my sister found a lot of uh, cool coins at this antique shop. Uh, found a new connection for us. Um, but we're going to be speaking about uh, a myth about the coin space and collectible space in general. A uh, few cool coins that we got today. Uh, 1909 SVDB. Uh, 1922 No-D. Um, got some nice coins in from Facebook, a few in from eBay, one from Instagram, so a lot of cool coins to show you guys. I appreciate the support on uh, the previous videos. Uh, here's uh, a few of the coins from uh, a few previous videos back, but uh, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Hey guys, just made it up to the light box and I wanted to talk to you guys uh, a little bit today about a myth that I hear all the time um, for people that are making their way into coin dealing. Um, and that myth is, uh, what if I buy something and no one wants and no one wants to buy it from me? Um, and what you're going to start to learn is if you're moving into numismatics or different collectibles, uh, that's just not reality. Um, for me, which I've been talking about for the past a uh, few weeks that I haven't really shared with you guys is uh, you're not really going to have a problem buying something, you're going to have a problem keeping it. And um, we're going to start to show off a few coins here. We actually ended up buying uh, an 1896-0. This is a pretty cool, you know, not not so common date. Um, stuff that we're actually moving into raw coins as of recently. Uh, as you saw from downstairs, there's a whole bunch of uh, raw coins, a whole bunch of graded coins. Uh, but stuff like this really uh, is appealing to us, you know, uh, something for a whole filler for somebody. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit today, like I said, about, uh, you know, the myth of of coin dealing in terms of not being able to sell something. Um, that's just uh, something that I thought at first, and that ended up being a myth for me, um, just because uh, I, was, I was pretty enamored um, with how people were moving and selling things, and I didn't believe in myself enough to do it. Um, and when I started to buy stuff that people desired and enjoyed, um, and I started going to shows, um, it really turned the tide for me. Um, and the, the process that I break down um, is a little bit different and kind of conceptualize it for you. Um, but first, let's break down this coin. This is a 1922 No D uh, uh, penny, which is pretty hard to find. Um, I'm not sure if it has a strong or weak reverse. That's just something I need I need to learn. I think it might have a weak reverse here. Um, but I got it for a pretty decent price. I got it for like 120. I think these are selling for, you know, 300 bucks, 350 bucks, which is pretty interesting. Um, just not your everyday coin. Um, but the process that that it takes to actually go and buy coins um, is pretty tough. Like we we would have to drive to Orlando or Colorado or even across town or have to be able to uh, find connections for 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 coins, um, but for selling stuff, it's it's not too hard at all. Um, once you get the right connections, um, start selling in the right places, start meeting the right people, um, you selling something is going to be very simple, very easy. It's going to take you a few minutes actually, um, and I'll, I'll show you guys a few coins that we actually sold as soon as we bought this collection today at a, at a uh, antique shop, um, but. The thing about that that you have to understand, and that what which, like I said, I had I didn't understand at first, is that we don't really uh, we didn't really think and believe in ourselves enough to be able to sell coins, and uh, the process to go buy them and to keep them is a lot tougher because, say you know someone buys a whole whole lot of coins, I have to go find new ones, and I have to go find things for new people uh, for other people to buy, and other people to put in their collection, and so. Uh, collectibles are very profitable, are very unique, and so uh, that's just a myth that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, 
because you know we, we just think about it a different way if we're smaller time or selling just to make a few bucks these other big dealers they they sell stuff and they want to replace it instantly and replacing it sometimes takes so much more uh, more time than selling it and uh, I just wanted to tell you guys that uh, and I want to tell you that I believe in you believe in you guys whatever you want to do um, if you guys want to comment below something that you're passionate about right now uh, maybe that you're moving into uh, for a financial uh, prop up or um, just something that you like to do um, I'd love to respond uh, in the comments below to you guys and um, talk to you about uh, your passions and your hobbies but this is our first ever 1909 SVDB um, as you can see it's got pretty nice details here um, just a really nice coin I'm not going to really bust it out of this flap yet. I'm going to do that uh, before we send it in. But you can see the really nice VDB showing up down there. Sometimes when it gets a little worn, um, you can't really do that. Um, but it's it's showing up down there in color, really nice. Um, and I'm very fortunate enough to get my feet in the water with a coin like this. Um, and the guy that helped us today was very nice. He goes through collections all the time. And that's uh, we're actually might build a friendship with him and maybe be able to do something in the future. But uh, let's keep showing you guys the stuff we bought from him today. So speaking of things that you can't keep, this is uh, I think eight. Let me see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, Carson Cities. Uh, these are actually before I left the shop. I already had a buyer for these. I had someone that I knew would pay the most, and um, so that's that's kind of how everything breaks out. Um, uh, you can't keep stuff, uh, you know, when you have the person that might pay the, the most for it um, right at your doorstep. So all these coins, um, I'm going to break it down for you really quickly. I paid two ninety dollars each for all these coins, and I'm going to sell them to a wholesaler for 345 each. So instantly about, you know, $450.00. Uh, for somebody just on these coins um, it, it when you break it down that way it, it really uh, puts it into perspective of uh, I can't keep a Carson City uh, for someone that might want it but I also have someone that that wants it and to f find this connection it took us a while uh, to run into cool coins like this at an antique shop so you're getting that kind of uh, two-sided perspective with these but let's show you guys them pretty quickly you know 1884 CC most of these are 63 62 coins some have some toning on them from when they were held in the original roll. Um, that, that was kind of that's the rubber band toning uh, from them. Uh, here's another one. Uh, just pretty nice examples. No staple scratches, which is cool. Uh, this probably was held at the other end of the roll. Uh, we have another 1884 CC here. Uh, this coin's pretty beat. Um, I, I say this coin is you know 61, maybe 62 if you're lucky. Uh, another 1884 CC here pretty cool um, stuff that I don't really like jump for joy about anymore uh, but like I said for this purpose of this video it gives you guys a perspective uh, a vantage point of uh, of what I deal with on, on a regular basis and many people have been asking like wh where is your coins at when you post your videos why aren't they on your website because they're already gone and that's not something to boast about or be you know showboating about but that's just something that uh, we're trying to keep up with uh, we were messaged about a few coins asking where were they you you posted them on your uh, you know YouTube but they're not on your your website we just can't keep certain things at, the, at this time and so bear with us we're trying to fill uh, the void when we can but uh, new stuff is being posted there every single week and we hope to help you guys out um, and uh, add some more things to your collection um, this is the last CC right here pretty nice coin big hit above the eye but other than that uh, pretty flawless. Now we're going to break down into uh, other coins that we bought this week. Um, just some online stuff. Um, things that I don't see every day. This is an 1883, I'm sorry, 1838 uh, dime with no stars. Um, someone was offering this um, on Instagram. And I haven't seen one of these sell in, uh, I think, over a year. Many of these uh, are being uh, held or they're just so rare that you, you don't you don't see them every day um, so it gives us that kind of diversity at the shop that uh, people don't really uh, get to see too often um, this this coin uh, I think will be wonderful for someone's set um, I think this was the first year for these um, I have to double check 
I almost bought one of these yesterday at the Austin show, but didn't get a chance to. Um, but like I said, very nice. It gives us some diversity, and uh, can't go wrong with that. Up next, we have a guy from Facebook that we bought from this weekend. Uh, it's an 1886O, tougher date, uh, nice original coin. Uh, he sent these in um, to get true views, um, rightfully so. I mean, just, just gorgeous examples. Um, I love handling tougher date coins like this, as you know. Um, just, you know, I, I love it. I love it. This is actually a tougher date, uh, 1882O. Uh, this is an MS61 dimple. You don't see that every day, mainly because when you're starting to get those hits and bag marks in the fields, um, it's very hard to uh, get dimple attached to a coin. But this coin actually ended up hitting dimple for, for us, which is very awesome. And, uh, you know, 1882-0, like we were talking about in uh, the submission video a few videos back, is a very hard thing to attain um, in higher grades just because... Um, few were minted, a lot were melt down, um, but this coin is stellar. Uh, just so many hits on the obverse that it really detracts uh, the grading uh, grading portion, but still a lovely coin. I uh, wish it would grade higher, but if it graded higher, I'd be in deep, deep waters with the money on this coin. And last but not least from uh, the buys from this weekend from uh, our friend on Facebook, this is an 1883-0. I think he expected the grade to be a little higher. But it looks like there's uh looks like the strike is very weak when you look at the hair here. You can kind of see the luster going through it. Um, the it strikes also weak right here um, on the eye. Uh, but other than that, I mean, look at the cheek. The cheek is just amazing. Wow, that cheek is phenomenal. We flip it over. Really flat breast feathers, as you can see. But once again, really clean in the fields. Um, this coin, I think, was is highly undergraded for some reason. I mean, just look at it from afar here. Well, let me know if you guys think this coin's underrated. I mean, I see a fingerprint there. Um, start to kind of angle it in certain directions because sometimes it can be hard to to show it and see it. But, I mean, look at that coin. It's, it's really nice. I love handling PQ examples like this one. And last but not least, I wanted to show you guys uh, these two coins we're actually going to be sending into CAC. Um, found these on eBay. Um, this is a 1954S uh, Kennedy. I'm sorry, Franklin half dollar. It's got a big fingerprint uh, to the right of his face. Um, but I mean, it's a pretty flawless coin. I think this coin could have uh, 65 or, or better. Um, I think it might be a 66 shot. Um, but this is actually the reason why I bought this coin is because it is in a doily holder. Um, you can kind of see from the background here they have the retro doilies, but these are the original doilies. And it actually breaks apart in two pieces here. Um, and as you can see by the, this back inlay, um, this is an original doily. Um, and the cert number is only a seven cert number um, uh, coin. So, uh, lovely example. I'm ready to show you guys our CAC submission here soon. Um, you're going to be blown away by the pieces that we send in. And let's show you guys the last coin of the video. This is... A 1936S MS65 full bands uh, Mercury Dime. We actually bought this one in the same exact package as the other doily. Um, this one I think has a, a strong shot at a gold cac as well. Um, I, it's so hard to actually capture. Uh, this this uh, holder has a little bit more wear on it uh, than normal. But uh, wow, the luster on it is very nice. I think this coin uh, is a 67 all day long. Um, and if it ends up being in 67 in full bands, it actually is a pretty expensive coin. So I'm going to let CAC take a look at this coin and let us know how it did. Um, but I hope you guys uh, feel inspired by this video. I hope you guys uh, go and take some risks this weekend. Go and take some uh, risks during your, your week and try to find some coins that are undervalued um, or things that you like to buy that are undervalued that you can go and... Uh, maybe sell or go and uh, do as you please with them. I think that we uh, only have one life and we have to take risks sometimes. And uh, buying this many coins and doing this much inventory uh, really does take a lot and does take uh, some time and effort. But in the end, uh, we knew that we took the risk. We knew that we we're gonna reap the rewards of it. Um, working hard is something that uh, we pride ourselves on um, 
here at Akusha Collectibles. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Uh, we're going to roll to the outro, but before, we're going we're gonna to actually have a CAC uh, video out soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Hey guys, just wanted to thank you for watching today's video. Uh, I hope this uh, understanding of this myth helps you guys, uh, gives you guys some uh, relief when jumping into this space. I think there's so much opportunity out there that uh, having kind of that crippling, uh, a crippling paralyzation of not wanting to be able to do something uh, shouldn't be for you guys and shouldn't be for other people. I think that if we have people that constantly try to uh, work and do do things better um, we could start to all move more forward together I hope you guys have a great rest of your day um, make sure to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time